Obedience to you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you this evening to the First Missionary Baptist Church Bible study and live stream. And um, so glad that you joined in. And uh, we want to let you know that we're excited about this opportunity again to share uh, God's Word uh, with you uh, at this particular time. Um, before I began uh, sharing from the scriptures, I want to um, have prayer. And I want to pray on behalf of those who have uh, requested uh, prayer. Uh, some have contacted me asking me to specifically uh, pray for them. Uh, also, we want to pray for uh, families uh, our churches and everywhere uh, in the midst of this pandemic that we are yet struggling with, but yet by the help of the Lord, we are making it by doing the best we can. And uh, we know that God is with us and God is able to sustain us and see us through this. We want to remember those who are sick, those who have the virus, others who have other sicknesses. We want to pray for those who are uh, amid turmoil in their families and their household. We want to lift them up in prayer as well. We want to pray for our, our churches and our preachers everywhere, all over the land and country. Let's pray for those who are in government, uh, leaders who are in position, who are in office. Let's pray that uh, they will seek the wisdom and guidance of God as well. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know, we've said it down through the years, and, and we say it again, and probably uh, takes on even greater meaning uh, when we say it now. And the saying is, uh, it's praying time. Yeah, Lord, we tell you, it's, it's, it's praying time. I mean, and, and, and so with that in mind, we, we want to go to the throne of grace now. And, and let's pray. And I would that uh, wherever you are, uh, that you would join in with me in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we come saying thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. Thank you, O oh God, for keeping us and blessing us even now. We thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we thank you for the activity of our limbs. Thank you for a mind and desire to come boldly to your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in this time of need. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, that we have access to you through him. And Lord, we give you praise. O oh God, we know that every day is a day of thanksgiving and every day is a day to give you praise. We ask you, Lord, that you will forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings. Forgive us of sins of commission as well as sins of omission. Lord, forgive us every thought, every word, everything that we have done that's not pleasing in your sight. And we ask you in Jesus' name that you'll create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, we come asking of thee that you will look on us and hear our feeble cry. We pray for those who have called in and who have requested special prayer. Lord, I lift them up to you because I know if anybody can, you can. Oh God, we pray that you have mercy upon them. We know all power is in your hand. Lord, you are able to speak and it shall be done. You said in your word, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. We pray, oh God, that you will bring healing in the lives of your people, of those who are sick. Oh God, we know that you can turn things around because you are God and God alone. We pray that you look upon every family, some, oh God, on their hearts are broken, they're in sorrow because loved ones have passed away. But I know that you're able to give comfort and strength to them. I pray that you'll help them to look to you and know that in you there is comfort and strength, that there is consolation in you. I pray for the families that's a bit turmoil for whatever reason, whatever's going on. Help them to seek your will. For we know you said in your word that you're not the author 
of confusion, but you're the author of peace. And we pray that you'll help be able to seek your peace and seek to be at peace, oh God, for we know that 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 you are able to speak peace to our stormy situation. We pray, asking of thee, O oh God, that you'll help us to draw nearer to you. We know that even in times of trouble, it's just another opportunity to get closer to you. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us and strengthen us for your name's sake. We pray for those who are sick at home. I pray for the members of our church, O oh God, those who are handicapped, those who are down, those who are struggling right now. We lift them up to you. Not only our members, but people everywhere. Those who are listening right now, whatever they are going through, help them to know that you are able to see them through the trying times of life. You are able to meet their every need. Oh God, you are able to strengthen those who are weak, build up those who are torn down. We pray that you will just have your way with us, in us, and through us, oh God. And we pray that we'll live so that we can give you glory with our lives. And, and again, we say thank you, and we bless your holy name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This evening I want to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and there I'm reading verses 28 and 29. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, uh, the fifth chapter, and the 28th and the 29th verse. When you get there, you'll find these words. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Amen. I want to use for subject the benefits of fearing God. The benefits of fearing God. We're living in a day and time when uh, there are many people all over the world, who, and even all over this land and country, the United States of America, who, who, who don't fear God like we used to. Uh, when we were children, we were taught and brought up to fear God, uh, to fear God. And some of you can remember uh, when we were children, when a storm would come, lightning and thundering and so forth. Uh, you know what they told us. You need to sit down and be still because the Lord is working. Uh, you know, we would unplug the TV. You know, anything we had in our hand, we put it down. We would sit down because they had told us the Lord is working and, and we didn't move until the storm had passed over. And they, they were teaching us. That's one of the things that they would remind us of that God is strong, he's mighty, and you need to fear God, fear God. And, and so um, uh, it's important that, that, that people fear God. And so when I look at the text here, uh, it comes from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the books of law. The first five books of the Bible are called the books of law or the Pentateuch, and uh, the term Deuteronomy means second law. Uh, and the reason why it's referred to as the second law because it's the second time uh, the Ten Commandments are found in this particular segment of books. Uh, the first time, you know, is in Exodus 20, and for the second time it's found here in the fifth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, we see it here in this fifth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. It's not a new law, but it's the repeating of the same law. Uh, uh, Moses and Israel have been journeying through the wilderness for a 
almost 40 years or 40 years now. And, and, and many of those people had died in the wilderness when the commandments were first given. And their children and their children's children have now come on the scene. And so it was needful that the law of God be repeated and taught again to the congregation of Israel. They needed to, 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 to be taught the law. To hear again God's law, and so Moses is is here addressing uh, the the congregation. When you look in this book of Deuteronomy, you will find many addresses delivered by by Moses, uh, and and he reminds them of of where they come from and how they got to where they are. In the book of Deuteronomy, the key word of the whole book is the word remember. It's a word that's, that's emphasized time and time again throughout this book. And so Moses is, is talking to them so that they will remember some things that happened uh, after God had, had brought them out of Egypt. They've been reminded that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and and, um, and he talks about how when God first gave us the law, uh, we were at the mountain of God and how the mountain began to quake and there was lightnings and thunderings and the people were so afraid. He's telling them that, and I remember y'all came to me as a people and y'all said, look, we fear God and, 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 and we're afraid of him. But, uh, but we, we noticed that, that he talks to you. And so rather than us hearing straight from God, Moses, we'll hear you. We'll listen to what God has to say through you. And Moses is reminding them of that. And in this verse, he says, and God knew what you said. In the verse, he said, when you spake these words unto me, the Lord heard what you said. And the Lord said that they have spoken well. You know, when they said, we will hear you, that's what he said in verse 28. The Lord was aware of what you said. And listen, God is aware of everything we say, be it good or bad. God knows what we say. And God has a way of reminding us of what we said. Okay? Now, he said that the Lord said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people. And what they said, they spoke well. But in the next verse, verse 29, he said, Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me. God said, they sounded good, but they were not sincere about it. He said, he said look, look, if they had a heart to fear me, and to keep all my commandments, that it might be well with them and their children. That's, that's what God said through Moses. He, he wanted them to know, look, I'm cognizant of what they said. And yet, I have a criticism against them. Because they sounded good. But their heart was not in it. And listen, God knows what's in the hearts of people. You know, you can't fool God. You can't, you can't flatter God. You can't, you, can't, you can't sneak anything by God. God knows the thoughts of your mind. He knows the intents of your heart. He knows your motive. He knows the reason why you do what you do and say what you say. He said that, I wish it was in their hearts. That, I, that they meant it from their hearts, that they would, notice what the text said, that they would fear me. God has commanded man to fear him. Amen. As a matter of fact, when you look in this sixth chapter of Deuteronomy, if I may just, let's walk through some scriptures tonight. Deuteronomy chapter six, look at verse 13. Verse 13 of Deuteronomy 6, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him 
and shall swear by his name. That's one of the many places where we are commanded to fear God. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 8 at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 6. He says, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Amen. God is to be feared. God is to be feared. When we say fear God, we don't mean to be afraid of him that you won't have anything to do with him. But it is to reverence God, to have the highest respect for God, to, 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 to be in awe of God. It is, it is to be afraid to offend God, to disobey God, to be afraid to go against anything that God said. Fear him. Fear him. Deuteronomy chapter 12. I mean, chapter 10, verse 12. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Uh, Deuteronomy 10, chapter verse 12 and 9. Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. God, brothers and sisters, must be feared. God is somebody to fear. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, Solomon said, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's what he said. So the Bible is clear that God has commanded man to fear him. God is to be feared. Now, when a person fears God, it will certainly be reflected in our conduct. So we move now from the, the command, from the command to the conduct. Okay? Notice what the verse said in Deuteronomy 5, verse 29. And keep all my commandments always. See, if you fear God, if we fear God, it's going to show in our conduct. If we fear God, we're going to act like it. We're going to talk like it. We're going to treat folk like we fear God. Okay? That's, that, that. It's going to be reflected in our conduct. Uh, the Bible points out uh, certain people by name who who were known for fearing God. One of their characteristics that stood out was that they feared God. When you read about Job in the book of Job, chapter 1, you know, the man who lived in the land of Uz, uh, the Bible says that, that, that Job was one who was a perfect and upright man. And the verse said, and feared God and assured evil. One of the characteristics that stood out about Job was he feared God. He feared God. Even when Satan showed up in the presence of God, God brought up Job's name, and God himself said, Job fears God. You understand what I'm saying? And then Satan had to acknowledge the fact that Job feared God. He said, yeah, don't he fear God for nothing? You know, I mean, the only reason why, you know, Satan accused Job, said, the only reason why he, he feared you is because of what you're doing for him. He said, but if you take everything you got, he'll curse you. But that didn't work. Okay? Job feared God. You know, there are just many things you'll be afraid to do when you fear God. Okay? Uh, the Bible talks about a man named Obadiah in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, uh, when Elijah was getting ready to go back and, and meet with Ahab. Uh, and, and so that the famine would end, God was sitting rain as he promised Elijah. The Bible said he met up with the governor uh, by the name of Obadiah. And the Bible says in that 18th chapter, first king, in the first few verses, that Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. And the verse proves something that he did to show that he feared God. For when Jezebel killed or cut off the prophets of God, the Bible says that Obadiah took the prophets by fifties, and hid them in the cave, and fed them with bread and water. 
He did that because he feared God more than he did Jezebel and King Ahab. When you fear God, you'll show some signs. And so the verse said that if we fear God, we'll obey him. To fear God is to obey God. You don't have trouble doing what he said. Amen. He said that, that if they have a heart to fear me and that they would keep my commandments always. Listen, to fear God is, is not just a weekend thing. But it's a daily life. It is to fear God every day. At every time, every moment. It is to fear God. Amen. That's the conduct. Well, let me tell you that uh, the text also teaches us that there's special care given for those who fear God. Special care. Listen to what the rest of the verse says. He says that it might be well with them and with their children forever. He says if you fear God, God is able to make things go well with you and even with your children. <laughs> Amen. God will bless you. Look, that, those are some benefits of fearing God. Listen, the verse said that He'll make things go well with you. Amen. Well with you don't mean that you're going to be rich. But God can still bless you where things will go well with you. You know, there's a whole lot of things. Money just came by. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, give me some money and I'll have everything I need. Anything no money can't do, I don't need it. Done. But there's a whole lot of things God can do that money can't do. Money can buy you a bed, but it can't buy you no sleep. Money can buy you food, but it can't buy you an appetite. Money can buy you a house, but it can't buy you a home. These are things that only God can give you. He said that, that it may be well with you. God will give you special care, special blessings, special benefits. When you live in fear of him. Peter put it this way in Acts chapter 5. You know, sometimes people are more afraid of people than they are God. You know, when the apostles were, were preaching about Jesus Christ, about how he had risen from the dead and how they were preaching in his name in Acts 5, the religious leaders couldn't stand it. When you read Acts 5, they brought the apostles forth. And Peter, you know, that, 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 that disciple who was always the outspoken one. But he was under the influence of the Spirit. And he spoke and he said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Because God is to be feared above everything and everybody. Amen. And so the text said that. That if we fear God, God can bless you where it go well with you. Even now, whatever's going on in your life, God can make things go well with you. But the key is, you must fear him. If you fear him, you're going to show it. You're going to take time to hear what he has to say. You're going to apply what he says to your life. You're going to treat people like God said treat them. When you fear God. I'm almost through here. But let's just look at some other scriptures to point out some of the marvelous benefits that you will have when you fear God. Turn to Psalm 31, Psalm number 31, and let's look there at the 19th verse. Psalm 31 and verse 19. Psalm 31, verse 19. This is what it said. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Look, you, listen, you have seen all the goodness that God has. But he said, when you fear him, he got some goodness. Listen, God got a layaway program. He said, it's laid up. 
some goodness you have not yet experienced. But the more you fear God, the more goodness will come your way. Oh, Lord. That's why you, that is, it, we make it a cliche sometimes the way we talk about it, but it's the truth. When we wake up and say, God is good. When we, when we tell somebody, God is good. Look here. That's the truth. Because he, listen, Oh, for you say it in their own broken knees. He just keep getting good and good. <laughs> they just get good and good for it because you haven't experienced all of his goodness. If you fear him, he's got some goodness laid up for you. That's Psalm 31 and 19. Look at Psalm 33 and verse 18. Talking about the benefits of fearing God. Psalm 33, verse 18. Listen to what it says. Behold the eye of the Lord. This is Psalm 33 and 18. Behold the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Listen, you know, the eyes of the, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. But the text says when you fear God, God takes special note of you. He, he notices you in a special way. He watches over you. Amen. He, he, he watches over you in a special way. When you fear God, amen. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Psalm 34, verse 7. There are two in Psalm 34. Psalm 34, look at verse 7. Look here. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that Fear him, but that's not all. And deliver it them. So listen, when you fear God, he'll let his angels watch over you. They'll surround you. The verse said, the angel of the Lord encampeth around. The verse said, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. God got an angel watching over you. And listen, he didn't promise that you won't have any trouble. But he says, when you're in trouble, he'll deliver you. <laughs> when you fear God, he got, you got an angel watching over you. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9 of Psalm 34. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want or lack is another word for the word want, to them that fear him. Look, God will meet your every need. Amen. He'll meet your every need when you fear him. That's what the verse said. If you fear him, there is no lack to them that fear him. As a matter of fact, verse 10 said, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Fear of God will he'll, he'll supply your every need. Well, let's look, if you will, turn back with me to Psalm 25. Psalm 25. In Psalm 25, the 25th number of Psalm, look at verse 14. Verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. God will let you in on some stuff that everybody don't know. When you fear him. Amen. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. All right. Now, look, if you please, if you will, at Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. I'm almost through. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. This is what it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Listen, you know, one of the ways to access wisdom, you know, wisdom comes from God. And one of the ways to access wisdom is, first of all, you got to fear God. The reason why a lot of folks don't have no wisdom is because they don't fear him. You got to fear God. There's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. He's talking about wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, the start of wisdom. Amen. Well, let's go to Malachi chapter 3. The last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3. And um, let's 
look there, if you will, at verse 16. Old Testament book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. The verse said, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened, and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Listen to what he said. Those that feared the Lord, the verse said, they talked about him to each other. And the Lord heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. It is said that God has at least three books. That God has at least three books. The first book is the holy book. The Bible. The inspired word of God. The second book that uh, I want to mention is the book of life. In the book of Revelation. Whosoever's name is not found in the book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. But then the third book I want to mention is the book of remembrance. That's a book where their names are mentioned. The verse said that, that it was written before him because they feared the Lord. Yeah, book of re remembrance. Yeah, the verse said, so, 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 so God, God will put you in his book. <laughs> When you fear him, when you fear him. Well, brothers and sisters, as I close tonight, this lesson, I want to encourage you to fear God. Fear God. If you fear God, you will love what God loves. When you fear God, you will hate what God hates. When you fear God, you have the greatest respect for God. You'll be afraid to do anything that God don't like. When you fear God, blessings will overtake you. When you fear God, his eyes are upon you in a special way. Those are some of the benefits of fearing the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word tonight. We give you praise. We fear you, Lord. Help us to live so that others will see and know that we fear you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, O God, that in him we have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in uh, tonight. I want to make an announcement. Uh, Lord's willing, on next week, on next week, uh, we will be doing Bible study through Zoom. Uh, through Zoom. That way, uh, we can uh, get uh, you all's um, questions, if there be any of you that have questions uh, about the lesson that is brought, or want to have comments concerning the lesson, I think it would be a beautiful way uh, to for us to interact with each other. So uh, we proudly look forward to that and we will certainly be giving you all the information as to how uh, you can connect with us on Zoom. And so we proudly look forward uh, to that taking place uh, on Wednesday of next week. May God bless you. Y'all get ready for Sunday and uh, we're going to trust God. God will see us through. I keep on saying it because I believe it with all my heart. God will see us through uh, this pandemic. You all stay safe. Uh, keep practicing social distancing. Wear your gloves and your mask. And uh, enjoy your days. God bless you. And may he keep you as my prayer.